Some people have had some problems trying to stack passenger missions and that's what we're going to try to resolve today. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we're talking about the passenger missions and especially the problem people have with getting the missions to spawn at a consistent rate. It's been one of the main concerns that's been posted on my original video uh, about these passenger missions that you can pick up here from Alan Hop and then bring them to LTT 9360. And if you haven't watched the original video, I really recommend you go and click the info icon and go and watch that because otherwise this is just not going to make a lot of sense. So, but anyway, if you know what I'm talking about. So the concern has been that people could not get the missions. It would take them hours to get the missions and they would have to leave early. Otherwise, the missions would run out. Um, so the first thing I want to comment on, it's very, very important when you do this, that, that you understand that this is an end game method. So it requires that you are trade elite. If you're not trade elite, you're not going to get very good results. So make sure you are trade elite before you start this. And yes, this is an end game method. Sorry if you're not at that level yet. I have plenty of other videos, for instance, the payload missions can still be, be useful. Then the second thing you need to make sure is, of course, that you need to be fully allied. It's not enough to just be friendly if you think it's okay, I'm friendly, I just do passion missions, I get the last, um, the last bit of the reputation. No, not going to work for you. You need to be fully allied. I'm going to try to open up the passenger board, which takes some time right now. Anyway. But even though people have been trade elite, you can see here, fully allied, fully allied, fully allied. I have one here that I'm not, but that's okay, because they can be a little difficult and don't offer that many missions anyway. Um, you need to be fully allied. It's not enough to be friendly. But even though people have been fully allied and they are um, trade elite, they still have had some problems. And it seems to be more common on the console versions of the game rather than the PC one. Um, not something I can confirm, but it seems, at least from the people I've talked to, that that might be a pattern that, um, that's emerging here. But there are things you can do. If you cannot get the mission board to, to respawn, what will often happen is when you're not getting any missions, is you're basically just cycling through the same mission boards over and over again, because they're not resetting for you. But there are, luckily, stuff you can do to try and enhance this. So, here's what I recommend you try. Um... You will run through the mission boards and you will go solo, open, private. No, solo, open, solo, private. I often do it in that direction, in that order, because it seems like private and, and open is often the same boards. But if I go, I, and again, this is not something I tested in depth, but it seems to me at least if I always bounce solo and then open and solo and private, solo, open, solo, private, do it like that, then it seems to be a little bit more consistent getting, the, getting new boards. But even if you do that, eventually you are going to run out and the missions are going to dry up and you're going to sit and you're going to be frustrated. Now what you can do is you can actually just leave for another station because the mission boards are not system wide. They're only station wide. That means if you go to another station, there's going to be other missions. So if we open up the system map for, for the system here, we can see that uh, we have two stations here that are of course only have small and medium landing pads. So if you're using a, a, a ship like maybe a Python, you can go to these stations as well, both of them. To pick up missions. Alternatively, you can go to the planet uh, around which the station is orbiting, because down here we have a um, a surface outpost with large landing pads. You can land there and um, and pick up missions as well. Word of warning, though, um, I believe we can highlight the planet here. Oops, that was not what I wanted. I believe the planet is about 2.5 g of uh, yeah. Here we go. 2.54 g. So it is quite a high gravity world. Um, so beware of that if if you're going down to that planet. But again, even if you decide to go to this planet, and that also dries up. You can still go to some of the surrounding systems around the uh, the area. So if we open up the um, galaxy map here, so for instance, our destination is right here, LTT nine three sixty. But you could also pick up quite a few missions in LTT nine four fifty five, for instance. And this system in particular is very good to picking up missions because I'll show up here in the map. Not only does the station, as the system has a single station here, very close to the um, to the star, which of course has a large landing pad. It has two smalls as well, so it's very similar in this uh, regard to the other system. But we have one down here with large landing pads. Oh, that was good. Not go exit, go back. 
Okay, and we're back. Okay, so as I said, we have the large landing pad here. We have one on this one, I believe. It must be over here then. Yeah, here we go. Though. There's another one there, also with a large landing pad. Um, so that's at least three large landing pads. And is it the moon? Does the moon have one? Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, there's also one out here. So there are, in, t in total in this system, four with large landing pads. So what you would do if you go to this system, you again need to ally yourself. And I'll come back to that in a bit. You need to ally yourself with the local factions. And then you would go to first the station, then to one surface outpost, to the next surface outpost, then to the fourth surface outpost. And of course, at each outpost, you're going to board hop. So you will go to the first station, you will board hop, go private open, private or solo open, solo private, solo open, solo private, until the board dries out. As soon as the board dries out, you move on to the next station in the system and do the same thing, board hop until that dries out, move on to the next, the same thing over and over and over again. And eventually, once you have done all four stations, you hopefully you are already filled up your cabins, or you can go back to the first one, move on to another system. That's completely up to you. Of course, this means you're going to spend more time, so it's going to um, more time than than at least if you can get the missions on a single station. But if you can get the missions on a single station, there's no reason to do this. But it is often a lot more efficient doing this rather than just sitting being frustrated at the same station where the mission boards are not going to respawn for you. So try to do that instead. Jump from planet to planet, from station to station. Okay, so that's the, the base method. You, so you can go around to all the different stations in the area, pick up the missions. So now we're going to talk about the second thing that some of the people had, um, had issues with. And that is, they said it takes a huge amount of time to get allied. Um, with the local factions. They say that it would take them weeks. Now, I've actually just, just done it in this system, uh, in LCT 9455. Um, and let's go and have a look at how I've done it. Okay, we moved over to the other system. Um, and what I would do if I want to level up or get reputation with the local factions is I'll go into the normal mission board and I will stack these data delivery missions. But don't take missions to... Uh, to LTT 9360, our target system for the passenger missions, because they will all be very far away. You can see we have one here, which is for that system. So I would not take this because you go in here um, and you can see here that the station is at those 1.8 million light seconds out. That would take us forever if we do took a mission like this. So what I would do instead is I would take donation missions. If I find them, take them, pay them, pay for them. Um, and if I find any other uh, missions, I would probably take them. I What I recommend you do, and this is depending on the system you're in, first have a scroll through the mission board. So here we have one for, um, for 9, no, 9 3 15. Um, and we can go in and have a look at the station. I'll then have a quick look through. See, we have another one here. Oh, that's the same station. How nice. What about here? That's nothing. Here, nothing. In here, we have a single one. So not that, that many missions, but we have two for the same. Um, for the same station. So I would probably say that's a good station to start with. And then, then pick two, three, maybe only one if there's a lot for the same same station. But two or three, no more than three stations that you're going to and only take for those. And make sure that you have a look at the distance. See, this one is 2,000 light seconds out. So it's a little bit on the long side, but that's okay. Um, so look at the distance and then pick, again, no more than three stations and then only take data delivery missions for those. Get it and do it in the fast ship. Don't do it in your big, slow traveling anaconda. I do this in my um, in my Imperial Courier, as you can see here. Um, and the reason why I use the Courier is because it's small, so I can go to all these small landing pads. A lot of these data missions will take you to small landing pads or medium-sized landing pads. So make sure you're not doing it in your large ship. It's going to remove a lot of your missions. Um, it's going to make it a lot harder for you. So get a, a, land, a ship that can at least land on a medium-sized landing pad and get something that's quick. I mean, this is my speed courier. And this is a little overkill. This can go just over 800 meters a second when I boost. But having a ship that moves quickly allows you to very quickly get to and out of the station so you don't waste that much time flying back and forth to, uh, to the station. And small, fast ships are often also more maneuverable, making them easier to maneuver around uh, and inside the station. So that's my recommendation. That's how I have leveled up my uh, my local factions in this system, um, which took me around about ten hours of gameplay. So you can then calculate yourself how much time you play a day and how much time it will take you. So 
if you have a very active weekend, you can probably do it uh, over a weekend. Um, so and once again, you are fully allied, you can then begin to pick up passenger missions. We can have a quick look if the passenger mission board will load. Um, and see if there are any missions uh, in the system. But uh, there should be two, uh, many, uh, some good missions here as well. Of course, I have no passenger cabins in this one, so it's going to be a little difficult to spot them. But um, but anyway, that's the um, that's the update. I, I hope this will resolve some of the issues you guys have had out there. Um, and if it did, or if you find this video useful, if you want more information like this when it comes up in uh, in the future of new methods, an update to this method maybe, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like so that I know that, uh, that you like this kind of content. So that's it for today. I really hope you liked it. Um, thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I will see you guys in space.